Hi everyone, my name is Professor Carl Mitchell and I'm coming to you from the Environmental Science and Chemistry Building at the University of Toronto Scarborough. For those of you who are thinking about or who are going to join our master's program coming up, I'd like to tell you a little bit about where you might find yourself. So in our building, we have a state-of-the-art building that's just a few years old now. It was built uh, to gold lead standard. We have all sorts of efficiencies here. Uh, everything from LED lighting down to a massive insulated envelope of the whole building. We have ground heat flux heating from boreholes and earth tubes that condition our air. All of these things come together to provide not just a, a state-of-the-art place to work, conduct research and to learn, but also um, something environmentally responsible that you're doing your daily activities within. One of the really great space aspects that we have at U of T Scarborough for the master's program in particular is a dedicated master's environmental student lounge. And we're standing in that lounge right now. And as part of this lounge, this includes significant study space and individual desk space. We have computer access. We have a lounge space with a kitchen if you're bringing your lunch and trying to meet with friends and, and take some time off. And we have really excellent meeting and conferencing space, all exclusive to students in our master's program. In addition to being dedicated space for studying and, and doing group work is really important for building the community amongst the students because you're going to be here for a relatively short period of time and it's important that you really get to know your peers get to build your networks amongst your peers and get to rely on each other for your success Within our state-of-the-art environmental science and chemistry building, we house a number of dedicated teaching laboratories that we use uh, for several courses in our master's environmental science program. Part of our program really focuses in on experiential learning and the ability for students to gain experiences that are actually skills that employers are looking for through laboratories, through workshops and other means within their courses that help build their overall career. Part of this includes things like uh, freshwater ecology and biomonitoring, which includes several modules about benthic invertebrate uh, identification that employers look for those types of skills in order to know that students can come in and do things like stream assessments and figure out whether or not water quality is something that's a problem in one place or another beyond just measuring, say, concentrations of chemicals. Other examples include a series of taxonomy courses, especially in the conservation and biodiversity stream, but that are also open to other students in our master's program and include different sections on things like fish and reptiles and, and uh, birds. In addition to this, we have all sorts of equipment that comes in, uh, both for research and teaching, uh, different sensors, microscopes, collections uh, that exist here in the laboratories that students can use to further their aspirations in our program. Currently we're in the TRACES facility of the Environmental Science and Chemistry Building, which is the teaching and research for analytical, chemical and environmental sciences. This facility is amazing. It houses all sorts of instruments uh, that allow us to analyze different media, soil, water, biota, for chemical concentrations amongst many, many, many possible constituents, molecules and elements. Many of you, you may find that analytical chemistry is not necessarily something you're interested in, but if you are interested in it, we do offer a course in analytical chemistry for geoscience that offers all sorts of access and, and experience in different instruments. But in addition to that, there's other aspects of understanding these types of things that are important for environmental professionals. And I'll give you one example, which is in consulting. Many of you, um, because of consulting and, and chains of custody, will often find that chemical analysis is disjointed from sample collection and data analysis uh, for reasons of bias. And so even though you may not find yourself in the lab, it's important that you understand, you know, how much can I expect sample analysis to cost? What types of machines are possible for analysis to be done? What levels of precision and, and accuracy can I expect by making these choices? How quickly can I expect these samples to turn around? All of these things are really important um, from a professional aspect in addition to understanding the laboratory and analytical aspects.
approximately half of the area of the Environmental Science and Chemistry Building is taken up by cutting edge research laboratory space where our world renowned faculty supervise and conduct research related to both environmental science and chemistry. As a research options student, you're gonna take four months, uh, usually during the May through August period, and conduct some original research. That may be included in the field, it may be some modeling exercises, when you may find yourselves in a laboratory either analyzing samples or doing experiments or both. Um, you're gonna be able to do that in these really high-tech, state-of-the-art facilities, and you're gonna be able to produce results um, that are gonna potentially really make a difference within environmental science. Thanks for joining us on this tour of the Environmental Science and Chemistry Building. We very much look forward to being able to welcome you here in the fall. Coming here, you're gonna really be able to further explore the cutting edge research, teaching, and other types of spaces that we have both in our building and on campus.